Thank you everyone for coming to today's seminar. Uh, thank you judges and uh, audience members. So our project is titled the Transparent Crystal Nano, uh, Crystalline Nanocellulose Defrosters for Defrosting and Defogging Applications. My name is Kelvin. And I'm Pukina. Uh, and we'll be presenting our project today. So our project uh, basically is, we're gonna introduce the project first on the problem that we wish to solve. The, uh, the problem being the reduced uh, invisibility due to frost or condensation accumulation, especially in visibility dependent applications like car windshields or household windows and mirrors. So um, the, the current solutions do exist uh, with electrical defrosters at the back of the car. As you can see in the image, there are opaque lines. Um, at the front windshields, they use air blowers, um, but these both have slow thermal response and are non-uniform in, uh, in practice. Next um, solution is an anti-fog spray. Basically, this is very temporary and a passive device. While the indium 10 oxide is uh, well researched in uh, conductivity, uh, it is uh, slightly fragile. So some, um, to reach our solution, we have basically come up with some criteria and customer requirements that would be a successful uh, product. And we've divided this into primary, secondary, and tertiary goals. Most important criteria being a resistance requirement of less than 150 kilo ohms in order to have enough resistant dual heating from uh, the current flow. Next is the transparency, which is uh, basically the Transport Canada's uh, safety guidelines, which should be greater than 70% visibility. While the uh, heating behavior, we wish to reach one minute uh, of heating to at least 40 degrees Celsius. And lastly, we wanted to see if our device would still work uh, in flexion. So from these criteria, we found several trade-offs. Being a thin film technology, uh, it's easy to reduce the resistance by adding more loading of material. However, more material means that the transparency of the product would be uh, less. Uh, it will block the light from passing through. Next is the heating behavior. Uh, it's dependent on the voltage applied. So the more voltage that we put on the device, the hotter it will become, as well as the faster it will do this. And lastly, putting it on a flexible substrate, when we bend the substrate, it might um, damage the film that we have. So to first uh, approach our solution, we based our, uh, our experiments on the research of our advisor and consultant. They did a supercapacitor uh, CNC now composite with polypyrrole PPY. So what they did is this conductive material, they press into a solid pallet used for energy storage. But in our case, we're dispersing in a solvent and uh, casting this as a thin uh, film on a piece of glass. And as you can see in the schematic, we have a core of CNCs, meaning uh, crystalline nanocellulose, uh, with a layer of amphiphilic PVP molecules that help guide the growth of the conductive polymer on the surface in red. So in order to test our device, uh, this is a schematic of what our device will look like. We have a copper tape and electrodes on either end of our uh, thin film, and this way we can measure the resistance between them, as well as apply a, a voltage in order to measure the heat uh, generated at the surface. So the paper that we based our experiments on only did the research on PPY polypyrrole, but there's another common uh, conductive polymer uh, out there in research, which is PDOT. Uh, we also purchased a P commercially available and pre-synthesized polymer, PDOT PSS, which is used in anti-static uh, applications, so we know it's very, very conductive. The synthesis for our material, our nanocomposite, it breaks down into basically five different steps. The first being the dispersion of CNC, the cellulose in water, and we do this by sonication, and we end up with a clear, uh, transparent uh, solution. Next, we add basically a powderized uh, PVP into the solution and uh, stir this overnight and this will automatically absorb onto the surface. And next is the most important step being the polymerization where we add oxidant as well as the monomer. For PPY, it's, poly, uh, it's pyro and P dot is E dot uh, component. We let this polymerize at three hours and this uh, creates a kind of darkish blue solvent uh, solution. And next is we do a purification step to extract the solid uh, nanocomposites before we redisperse in the solvent and spin cast this. So as we started doing experimentation, we changed this, uh, the original procedure that we developed by transitioning away from 
polypyro to actually P dot because polypyro for some reason decide, uh, is very likes to agglomerate to itself and when we try to cast it we have a very ununiform blotchy uh, surface whereas uh, the purification method we initially use a filtration cell and it will slowly drip out the solvents but this took the entire day so instead we just disintrification in order to just extract solids and uh, we initially did our spin casting at 2300 rpm uh, but this was not enough to remove the large agglomerates we just wanted to retain the small agglomerates so we increased the speed so in order to compare this to um, things that we know are conductive right now, uh, as we mentioned before, we know that ITO is a very conductive uh, material. We just basically purchased an ITO coated um, substrate. And we also purchased uh, just a P dot PSS that's commercially recreated. So we use these two and we cast it by themselves and we tried to test them with the voltage to see if they can generate uh, any heating via, via dual heating. But surprisingly, they both do not seem to re produce any heat, even though they are conductive and relatively transparent. So we know that our material, based on the research of our con uh, consultant and advisor, that the material is conductive. So we basically cast a very highly loaded sample, the one in black in sample one. Um, and this, we can predict very well the heating behavior, both the temperature and heating time. Uh, so we decided to just use this as our reference point on seeing if we can reduce the transparency and yet have the same uh, thermal response. So we created four major films during our design. Uh, so there's six listed here. The first one is just our plain glass, which we use as control for uh, some of our testing. Um, next, as Calvin talked about, this is our polypyro sample. This was drop casted because spin casting just didn't seem to work. So this is a very black, opaque film. Uh, next, we have our P dot sample. So uh, all these samples have been coated on top of CNC and PDP. So as you can see, it's a little bit better in transparency compared to our polypyro. Um, over to uh, the right, our Fifth sample, this is our P dot PSS, which has just been casted on plain glass. Um, so you can see it's pretty transparent. And uh, while we were doing some testing, we had a sudden spark of inspiration, and we decided to combine our P dot and our P dot PSS sample to create a hybrid sample. That's the uh, top image on the right and the bottom image. They're just two different hybrids. They're, with the, they're the same solution, but uh, the first one was just recasted for demonstration and testing purposes. So we lost a little bit of transparency, but they're basically the same hybrid. So we performed four major verification tests during this process. Uh, we performed TEM, and this was just to determine how well our conductive polymer was adsorbed onto our CNC, and uh, also to determine how aligned our CNC was on our glass substrate. Uh, we determined the transparency using a spectrophotometer. And we determined resistance using a two-probe resistance with a multimeter. And finally, we determined the surface temperature of each of our films after applying voltage using a surface thermometer. So our first test uh, results from TEM. To your right, we have a TEM image of CNC only. So you can see uh, the size of our CNC particles to be approximately 500 nanometers. And uh, the first image is actually our PDOT sample. So it's been coated over top of our CNC. And you can see it's been uh, pretty uniformly absorbed onto our CNC surface. Uh, so this should, uh, when we apply voltage, uh, perform uniform heating. Uh, next, we looked at transparency. Uh, so we have a, a zoomed in version of all of our films at the bottom, just for your reference, as I talk about these uh, films. Uh, we've also kept our baseline of 0 and 100% um, also for reference, so that's the black and dark blue line on the top. So starting with our first sample, which is uh, the green line at the bottom, this was our black opaque polypyro film. As expected, uh, we achieved 0% transparency. Uh, moving up to the pink line or magenta, um, this is our PDOT film. Um, this is more transparent, but this only achieved a transparency of about 20%. So we haven't quite hit 70 yet. Um, moving all the way up to the orange line on top, this is the commercially purchased PDOT PSS. And uh, we did try uh, coating this with CNC and uh, PVP, but we only achieved a transparency of uh, over 80%. Finally, our hybrid, which are the light blue and purple lines. Um, the light blue is our first casted hybrid sample, and this achieved a transparency of 60%. And our second hybrid, uh, which we mostly use for testing purposes, uh, achieved a transparency of 40%. Um, 
We also looked at the temperatures of each of our films. So we performed a temperature ramp test where basically we took our films, we applied a voltage. Um, in most cases, uh, we applied a voltage of 140 volts. Uh, the only exception to this was uh, polypyrrol. This heated up to 90 degrees at 60 volts. So for safety purposes, we did not go to 140. But the rest of the films, uh, we uh, applied a voltage of 140. And uh, we took the temperature every 20 seconds for two minutes to see how the temperature compared. Um, as expected, our polypyro, which had the highest temperatures, um, achieved almost 70 degrees at two minutes. Um, our PDOT sample only achieved uh, a little over 40 degrees in two minutes. And our hybrid sample actually had a pretty good response and uh, we had comparable results to polypyro. Um, we also performed for fun an ice melting challenge. Uh, this is actually displaying uh, on a video at our booth, so feel free to come and check it out. Basically what we did was we took our sample, applied 140 volts, and we uh, decided to see how much ice we could melt in 10 minutes. And this is actually a screenshot of uh, the last moments of our test. Uh, so you have our, we uh, performed a control sample for each one of our films, just so you have a better reference as to the water levels that we uh, achieved. Um, so the first sample is our polypyro. Um, it had the highest temperature, so it had a pretty good difference in water levels um, compared to our control. Our second sample is our PDOT sample. This didn't achieve as quite, uh, quite as high as the temperature, so the difference in water levels aren't quite as uh, great. Our third sample is our hybrid sample. This also had comparable results to polypyro, so uh, the difference in water levels was uh, pretty pretty good. And finally, our um, PDOT PSS, which pretty much achieved little to no heating, uh, we achieved the exact same water levels, really, uh, in the end. So this table just summarizes all the tests that we have performed. Um, at the end, we have the resistance values of each of our films. Uh, our highest resistance uh, was with our PDOT sample, and our lowest was uh, with our polypyrrole. So after looking at all our results, um, we compared them to our uh, requirements from the beginning. And we achieved the majority of our primary and secondary goals. Uh, we uh, have a resistance requirement of less than 150 to 200 ohms, which we achieved with our PDOT and our hybrid sample. Um, our transparency levels still aren't quite at 70% yet, so there's still something we would need to work on. Um, our secondary goals of uh, thermal response time and temperature was also achieved with our hybrid sample. And finally, due to uh, lack of time and resources, uh, we just hadn't been able to test the flexibility of our film quite yet. Um, so after looking at all our uh, uh, results and uh, doing some analysis, uh, we concluded that our hybrid film was the best film that we would, uh, best film to move forward with because it had the best balance between transparency and temperature. And from our TEM images, uh, you can see that the CNC actually provides very good alignment and the conductive polymers were very, very well absorbed onto the surface. And uh, throughout our design and uh, uh, testing process, uh, we had been very focused on finding a conductive material in order to generate heat. And we realized after we purchased PDOT PSS and testing ITO, that con conductivity wasn't the only thing that we needed to consider. We should also consider the material's ability to generate heat, since polypyro and ITO just didn't seem to generate any heat when we applied voltage to it. Um, so uh, our future works include including the transparency of our film. In order to get our, uh, our film onto uh, car windshields, that we, hope we need to achieve at least 70% uh, transparency. Uh, we would also like to cast our film on a PET substrate just so we can test the flexibility and durability of our product. Uh, we'd like to try layer by layer deposition where we alternate between our PDOT sample and our PDOT PSS um, and see if that actually improves uh, any properties like our transparency and temperature. Uh, and in order to uh, get our product onto a vehicle, we need to uh, be able to have our product operate at 12 volts. Currently, it's operating at 140, so we would severely need to reduce our voltage over time. And finally, we'd like to perform UV and thermal testing uh, just to see the lifetime of our product. So that uh, pretty much concludes our presentation. Thank you all for listening. Uh, we'd like to thank our consultant and uh, advisor, Dr. Tam and Debbie Wu, for all their invaluable experience and knowledge. Uh, Professor Abukdir for the use of his electrical equipment.
and uh, all the departmental staff for their uh, support and organization. Uh, so I will take any questions you have now. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we think that um, because the method that we're testing our resistance is we're using a variable transformer for the temperature, it might be the limited by the current. Uh, the amount of power that we're putting in might be limited. Uh, so even if we have low resistance, if we have too little current going through it, it's not generating enough power. So, um, uh, we're, cons uh, we're controlling constant voltage and we have a curve here for the voltage and the uh, current that comes out from it. So it's very, very low uh, to begin with. So if you apply that formula and if it's limited by the current, um, I think the current would, uh, it's a squared factor compared to the R. Um, so um, it's going to play more of a role. And since it's limited by the current, it's not going to generate the same amount of power. So ideally, we might want to test having a c constant current um, uh, held instead of a constant voltage. Well, how does this vary from one particle to another particle? Uh, the current? You mean? Current. The current is constant based on our uh, power supply, actually. We've tested this via each of the polymer, and they have the same current uh, going through. This is from the power supply. Yeah, it's from the power supply. So from previous uh, research, uh, you can use, for example, metallic nanowires for heating, the ability. But the problem with that is when you have this heating uh, at the junctions, when you have a crossing between the nanowires, yeah, eventually through multiple cycles or really high temperature, you actually melt the wires and they uh, cause failure. So you had reduced the amount of electron pathways as the more that you heat it. So what the CNC does is it holds a certain network and it holds it there for um, as long as your uh, polymer is constantly on the surface. So that way we don't have degradation of our networks uh, and the electron pathways are maintained. That's the purpose of CNC. Did you compare the stability of your Well, uh, we had a TM image to show the absorbance of the CNC. So the, the zoomed in picture here, the shard is actually kind of like a shadow right here. This is one CNC uh, fragment. All these little shards are actually the growth of our uh, conductive polymer. So um, I guess that answers your question. Okay. Yes, that's very nice. Yeah, we didn't have uh, the time to actually test the flexibility of our film, but yeah, we would have to test it under uh, different voltages and different temperatures so that, uh, especially in a car, uh, during the summer, uh, you, you get temperatures of like 250 sometimes in your car, so that, that is something we'd have to test in the future. In Canada, you make your temperatures minus. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.